Hi there. Today I'm going to talk about what it means to strip down to our bones, to get to the core of who we are. We all grow up with stories of how we're too much, how we're not enough, the long list of shoulds that are placed on us by our family, by our culture, by our teachers, by our mentors, by our friends, the expectations of who we should be and how we should be in this world. It's a very heavy burden that we carry and we wear these stories. They cover up who we are. And sometimes we believe these stories because we've been told them so much and for so long and we don't know how to get rid of them or how to get to our true self and who we really want to be. We don't know how to get comfortable in our own skin, how to walk in the world confidently and proud of who we are. So we keep striving. We keep trying and trying and trying to measure up, to do better, to be better. And it leaves us feeling lost and lonely and truly unfulfilled. We keep looking to the future for the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. And we aren't able to settle into our now and what we have. It can be a confusing process letting go of these stories, moving on to who we are, not being who our mothers want us to be or our fathers or our third grade teacher. And how we get to these stories is by looking at them, by digging into them, unraveling them, trying to understand the hows and whys people told us these stories. What was their point? What was their purpose? Often we're given these stories as a way to protect us in the world. Being a woman in this culture, we are subjected to oppression. We are susceptible to rape, to being physically overpowered, to abuse. And so often these stories are passed down generation after generation as a way to try and keep us in line so that we won't receive those punishments of speaking when we speak up or speak out or stand in who we are. This work of stripping to our bones is intense. It's hard. It's not glamorous. I think I'm going to say that over and over and over in this series. This work, not glamorous. If you want to be glamorous, this is not the work for you. Believe me. And it is deeply fulfilling. To be able to walk into a room and not really care what people think or what people may or may not say. To feel confident and comfortable in ourselves. To do what we want to do in this world intentionally and mindfully instead of reacting and mindlessly following some unwritten rules that we've been raised in about what it means to be a woman, what it means to be female, how females are supposed to act and be. When I was young, my I had a very close relationship with both sets of my grandparents and my grandmothers especially. And my maternal grandmother 
was determined that she was going to raise me to be a senator's wife. I think I very sadly disappointed my grandmother. <laughs> my husband is nowhere near a senator. And I am nowhere near the proper young lady that she really wanted me to be. Now that said, I appreciate that training because I can fit into circles that I wouldn't be able to fit into if she hadn't taught me all of those rules. And so I'm in a place now where I don't need to rebel against what she taught me, but I can use it as a tool when and if I need it. A tool to create change and to impact the lives of others. As we do this work of digging into ourself and unraveling these stories, we'll be able to make decisions about what to do with these stories, what to do with this training that we've been given our entire lives. And we can consciously choose to use it or not use it. It can be a part of our toolbox to be able to play the game, right? Or we can just say, fuck it, and not use those tools at all. And it will be a conscious choice. It won't be out of reacting or out of fear that if we don't do this, we won't be accepted, or we won't be loved, or we won't receive basic things that we need for survival, nourishment, shelter, right? we can overcome those fears. That's what shedding to our bones is about. It's about tapping into that power and knowing there are consequences to it and knowing that it's worth the risk. I talked in the previous video about the people that we can lose along the way it happens. And there does come a point for many of us where that risk doesn't overshadow our deep need to connect to who we are and to speak our truth and our voice. And to stop fighting for love. We shouldn't be fighting for love. We should be loved for who we are. We shouldn't need to put on a mask or an act or a show to be accepted. And this work is about us coming to deeply, deeply internally realize that. It's one thing to know it in our heads, of course, right? I think we can all say, yeah, I know that, I know that, I know that up here. But we don't know it in our hearts, we don't know it in our guts. That's what this work is about. It's about getting this truth that we deserve love no matter who and what we are, who or what we do in this world. We are deserving of love and respect. And by respect, I don't mean, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I mean our boundaries being respected. I mean not being touched if we don't want to be touched. I mean being heard when we speak and not being talked over or have advice given to us about what we should do with our lives. Or how if we'd only done X, then Y and Z wouldn't have happened, right? To be heard and witnessed. This unraveling, and it is unraveling because these stories are, they are, they are woven together tightly, right? They are a part of our core and our being. They're literally a part of our physical being. We've internalized them that much. 
So this unraveling involves grief and it involves anger and it involves getting to uncomfortable spaces and being okay there. Knowing that you will be okay, that being in that discomfort, in that uncomfortable space, probably won't last forever. And that it's important to be there, to examine who you are. The other part of this stripping to our bones is also seeing the ways that we have harmed others. It's really easy to get stuck in the stories of how others have harmed us. And that is certainly part of our healing process, right? Is to look at those hurts and really experience the grief of them. And also, we need to realize how we have called, caused grief for others. Not many of us like doing that. I know I don't like to, um, I, I don't want to hurt other people. I don't want my actions to harm others or cause them pain or distress or to be oppressive or silencing. I don't want, that's not who I am. That's not who I want to be. And yet, my training runs deep in this culture. And by that, I mean, I have learned to oppress other people without even thinking about it. My daughter is my greatest teacher in this. And daily, I stop and go, oh, I'm silencing her. I'm shutting her down. I'm not letting her feel this, that, the other. And I step back and I apologize and we work through it. And it's always something different every day. And maybe it's not every day anymore, right? And she's that mirror that lets me see, oh, if I'm doing this to my kid, how have I done this to my friends? How have I done this to other people who matter to me? It's hard work. It's hard work. And we have to make repairs where we can. Apologize in the ways that we can and move forward and do different, be different. And that's uncomfortable when we first start doing it, when we first start being different in the world. When we first start working so hard to react in different ways, to be aware and conscious. It's incredibly uncomfortable because we don't know it. We haven't done it our whole lives. So it feels strange. It feels uncomfortable. And yet, with practice and intention and mindfulness, it does become a part of who we are and how we are in the world. And it becomes just part of our ways of being to examine what we say or what we do or to start thinking about what's happening in the middle of the situation or even at the beginning of a situation. We can see, oh, this is going south, right? And we can correct quickly. We can apologize immediately not need to go journal about it for a week, right? Stripping to our bones is getting to our core. It's tapping into our power. It's tapping into our truth and it's accepting both sides of who we are, the ways we have oppressed others and the ways we have been oppressed. We have to look at both sides of that coin. We absolutely cannot only choose one side of it because that doesn't change our way of being in the world. 
we not only have to look at how we have been harmed, but how we have harmed others. That's the true stripping. That's the true getting to our core. That's the true shedding of the stories of too much, not enough, should. All the judgment that we hold towards ourselves and towards others. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As you know, this is part of a series that I'm doing called Taking Off the Leash, and it is an introduction to the work that we'll be doing in the Wild Woman Within Circle. If you have any questions about that circle, just drop me a line, reply to the email. We can set up a 30-minute uh, phone or uh, video session and, and chat through it. I'd love to talk with you. Sending you love. And I will talk to you soon.